Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe or wreath. And they're changing their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew, all the who, girls and boys, would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then... On the noise, oh, the noise, the noise, the noise, the noise. That's the one thing he hated, the noise, the noise, the noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to feast, and they'd 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 feast. And they'd feast. They would feast on Who pudding, a rare Who roast beef, which was something the Grinch could stand the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand a hand in hell, and the who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why? For 43 years, I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming, but how? Mmm, then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and cluckled, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I'll look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the home where the Who's lay a snooze in the town. All the windows were dark, quite snow filled with air, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claws hissed. And he climbed up to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if old Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little hool's stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he looked for every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates and drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. And he stuffed them in a bag. Then the Grinch, very nimble, stuffed all the bags up one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last of their who hash. And then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. 
And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. Then he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small little who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught up by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There is a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child and he patted her head and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the, for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter past dawn. All the who's were still abed. All the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and all the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crimpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo hoo to the who's. He was a grinchishly, he was a grinchishly humming. They're gonna find out now that there was no Christmas coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, said Grin the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound of rising over the snow. It started low, then it started to grow. By the sound, but the sound wasn't sad. Why this very sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or the other. It came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood, stood puz puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags, and he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he had not before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And then what happened? Then! Well, in Whoville's, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart did feel quite so tight, didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, and he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef.